All right, I'm here this morning with Judge Jimmy Moore. He's a candidate for the uh, um, congressional seat currently held by Philadelphia Party Chair Bob Brady. That's correct. Uh, I'm running uh, in the first congressional district, which uh, entails on a new map, not only uh, 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 Philadelphia, which is east, most of it is east and broad, West Philadelphia, and it has um, a large area of Delaware County. Which used to be in the seventh district, which now sprawls over five different counties. That, that's correct. That's correct. So, uh, why are you running? Um, primarily because of the different challenges that the uh, district is facing. We have had the designation twice as being the second hungriest district in America. Uh, the unemployment rate is anywhere between 17 and 25 percent. We have Chester, which has always been part of the first district, uh, and has a prison. Uh, has a soccer field, has a casino, but no supermarket. Can you imagine a community in which the constituents, uh, all they have to is the fast foods and the mini market. Uh, you have a lot of children that have never had any fresh vegetables or fresh fruit. Uh, we have um, students uh, in the first congressional. One out of every three students um, drops out of high school. Uh, I've been on the bench for 11 and a half years. Lifetime appointment, didn't have to uh, give up the job. But day in and day out, uh, I saw many folks coming from the first congressional district uh, where their lives were already wrecked before they got before me. We were really reactive. I want to be proactive. Uh, hence, I decided to step down after 11 and a half years and, and seek this seat. The current uh, um, gentleman, uh, Mr. Brady, who's the chairman of the party, uh, has been in the seat for 13 and a half years, and on, the, on the, his watch, these types of things have developed. Has anything improved in those 13 and a half years in the district that you've seen? Absolutely not. Um, we've seen an erosion uh, of the community. Um, there has not been a supermarket in Chester. Um, uh, crime, uh, we have the designation, particularly in the whole city, as Philadelphia. Uh, violent crime has surged. Uh, we need to bring that back. Especially um, in West Philadelphia. Uh, West Philadelphia, primarily in, 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 in the first, in my district. Uh, it's my position that we got to take a very aggressive uh, um, position in terms of recapturing our streets. Uh, when elected, and in fact, in the, in the coming weeks, I'm going to go to the Justice Department and demand that they put more resources in the community. We had, if you imagine, if you would, 90 unsolved homicides. Now, personally, that's offensive, but in, th in 2008, in August 1st, 2008, my brother was killed. Uh, his murder was never solved. Uh, so if you imagine, in 2008, uh, we had some homicides that were not solved. In 2011, we had 90 uh, coming into the new year uh, unsolved. And I believe um, on New Year's Eve, uh, six homicides. So it, it's at an epidemic proportion. Someone needs to step up to the plate and say enough is enough. So much of the crime and the violence is fueled by the poverty, especially in areas like West Philadelphia and That's Chester. Correct. And the biggest hurdles to that are education and jobs. Um, but we're turning around and you know the Hanukkah Phillips refinery in Chester is being closed. Jobs are leaving these poverty-stricken areas. Um, do you believe that, that the real solutions to the endemic problems are educating these people properly and committing enough funds for education and to provide jobs for these people? Absolutely. We got Conoco that's dying. Darby, which is part of the district. Sears just announced that it was going to be closing. Um, the Chester Upland School District is being taken over, or has been taken over by the state. Uh, that's closing. The students are not uh, being educated. The, and the teachers, teachers are, are, are not even for free. free. They're not even being paid. They're not being paid. Uh, um, yeah. Meanwhile, we, we, we're doing all the other things, not getting our, our folks ready. Dovetailing to that is, is that we have outsourced many of the jobs overseas. 
got to bring those jobs back. I mean, it's absolutely necessary. We are dying at, at, at the branch while we are outsourcing. We got to shut off those tax loopholes. Got to bring the jobs back. We have to create an economy, a strong economy, not only the first, but also in the city and in the nation. And the beginning of that is to go to our major corporate uh, 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 partners and say, look, if you want to be a good uh, citizen, good corporate citizen, you got to bring these jobs back because the main source of your consumer is the Americans. And there should be some type of partnership between who your uh, consumer is and who's the producer. Um, talk about jobs. Uh, one of the reasons these jobs have disappeared are the tax breaks that favor outsourcing. Would you oppose that tax loophole? For I, I, not, only would I, well, not only would I oppose it, but I propose to shed it off. I mean, just sh shed it off. Um, because we can ill afford at this point in time to have tax loopholes. I think in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, corporations have had their day in terms of making money. Uh, but if we do not have a strong economy, our communities are gonna, gonna, going to die off. Uh, our schools are going to shut down. Um, and we're, we're not going to be able to be as productive as we have been, and, and our leadership in the global communities is going to go from number one to slip down to what God knows where. Would you support some school reforms that would wind up providing funding on a per student basis, where school districts like Philadelphia would be in an equitable funding position, say with Lower Mary and Abington and some of these suburban school districts? Uh, and, and if so, how do we go about that? Uh, I would have to study that, um, but I would um, be in favor of some equity in terms of uh, uh, Philadelphia school districts. Because, see, education is the beginning pipeline of the next uh, employee, the next professional, the next college student of tomorrow. We have to always be um, looking for it in terms of what's going to happen, not only with our citizens, but our students for tomorrow. So I'm in favor of giving a strong education. I'm from a welfare background. I was raised in the project. Uh, I have skipped many generations as a result of education. Uh, where would I be without education? Exactly, education is the key. Education, education is absolutely key. Because so you can bring the companies in, you can bring the jobs in, but if the workforce isn't educated... Then where do you go? Then you're going to have to outsource. And, and what we have to uh, have the corporations understand is that correlation between having an educated workforce, that that is an investment in, in, in terms of their employees, in terms of their workforce of, of the future and to tomorrow. Let's talk about some of your background. You said you grew up in the projects. Uh, you grew up in Hartford, Connecticut. That's correct. And talk some about your educational background. Uh, went to the University of, got a scholarship, went to the University of, of New Hampshire, uh, got a master's out of uh, the University of Massachusetts, master's of education, and I went to Rutgers uh, Law School here in Camden. Uh, all on scholarship, uh, worked my way through uh, uh, most of those different institutions. Um, but for uh, a high school uh, counselor that saw something in me that I didn't see in myself at 15 years old and what kid does, uh, um, I would have never been on this path. And, and that's another reason why I'm running, because at this point in time, I owe, I owe, I owe. Um, but for that counselor seeing something in me and putting me on that path, my life would, would have been drastically different. Um, so we have to be about giving back and not just take it. At this point in time in my life, it's time to give back. And the first, in which I said is one to three out of high school students who um, are not graduating school, but that doesn't start there. It starts in terms of the correlation between food and between education. If a student has to come to school and determine where his or her next meal is going to be, as opposed to listening to the teacher, naturally they're going to be on the path of trying to figure out where the food is. Um, that 
that's why hunger is is, is, is going to be one of my major lessons. And, and here this week, just this week, Governor Corbett has limited the eligibility requirements for food stamps in Pennsylvania, which is going to make the hunger situation worse. Um, if you're in Congress, um, you have the wherewithal and the influence possibly to pick up the phone to call the governor on issues like this? Uh, absolutely, and we'll call the governor, and we responded to that. Because does that make sense? Hypothetical. Let's assume that I or yourself had a job making fifty, even hundred thousand dollars, and uh, somehow you know you're laid off or downsized, and you have some money in terms of uh, a college fund for 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 one of your children, or, or a rainy day fund. Uh, the cutoff is two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred, which is not a lot of money when you look at. It. Okay, so we have to be about giving that helping hand in a, a very honest way, in a very equitable way, uh, in terms of those folks that may need it at their proper time. All right. Uh, you were a municipal court judge. That's you correct. had to step down in order to run for this office. Uh, talk some about your experience on the bench. And what is a municipal court judge? Well, a municipal court judge is in Philadelphia is the is, is between the, uh, the Court of Common Pleas. Out in most of the counties, it's a magistrate. But the difference between the two is that we are able to actually sentence people. Um, every crime comes before a municipal court judge. My experience is that I did approximately 65 cases. We, I often saw folks' lives have already wrecked prior to, particularly in the criminal division. They were either addicted to, to some form of, 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 of some form of crime and some form of uh, drugs, but it stemmed back from when they had the school. And at the point, I, I, I understood that we were reacting. So rather than just react, I wanted to be proactive uh, and just said, hey, I'm going to do this, and resigned uh, back in June 2011, and here I am. So really, the reason you're running is because of your experience on the bench and the desire to go to Washington, do something for these people, for these communities, to prevent all this that you saw while you were on the not, bench. Not only to prevent the, the, the crime to cure that I saw, problem. but also to prevent the brain burn. Also to, to, to uh, uh, for those students that did do the right thing, uh, uh, um, uh, who went to school and... Uh, was fortunate enough to get a degree and they come out and they can't get a job. We got to respond to that because we as Americans have sold our, 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 our sons and daughters this bill of goods that look, if you do the right thing, there's going to be something at the end of the way. Okay? That's not happening. A lot of reasons it's not happening is because of our source of the job and because we are not creatively looking at how do we take our students, how do we take those graduates and put them to work? All right. When I was at Occupy Philadelphia, I, I saw a lot of this. There were a lot of young people. I went to Occupy Philadelphia also. Um, they are participating in it. They're out of college. They have the degrees. They're saddled with all this debt. And they can't find jobs. I interviewed some of them. Um, and, and it it was kind of powerful. I interviewed some homeless people down there. Um, how do you tap into all of that as a candidate? I, and I, I, I laugh because I have a program that's going to come out. It's called the SIP program, Student Investment Program. And that program is designed to eliminate the stress of those students graduating, for example. When they graduate, oftentimes they have to repay those loans, eight, nine hundred dollars. They can't get back into the economy. Yeah. Somehow we have to a reduce those interests equitably, and somehow we got to reduce those monthly payments until they are able to get on their feet. They're entitled, after they defer their gratification, to move out of their mother's and father's houses, but they cannot if they have to pay eight, nine hundred dollars uh, monthly payments. Does that be their rent? <laughs> yeah, that would be their rent. Payment. They will be able to uh, to get cars, automobiles. We gotta be, allow them to get 
into the economy because they can also can help us re-energize our economy. Um, so you'll see in the coming days the SIP program, which is essentially what we're doing is trying to get the students after they graduate the ability to get back into the economy and get on their feet uh, uh, without penalizing them for doing the right thing. We want them to get educated, but we don't want to enslave them uh, uh, with, the, with, with the student debt. Uh, and oftentimes, as you may know, oftentimes those student loans, uh, the parents have to co-sign. And when they don't pay them, then it goes against their, their credit report. We want to do something with that also. What other issues are central to your campaign? Um, hunger, uh, education, um, public safety in terms of uh, um, uh, um, in terms of our senior citizens. Um, uh, I am um, 60 years old. Hence, <laughs> we, are, we are moving rapidly there. Uh, after we pay our dues in terms of working and being productive, we're entitled to all the benefits and the rights that we work toward. And that's including public safety, that's called Social Security, Medicare. All of those things are part of my, 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 my program. All right, well, if people want to help support your campaign, how do they do that? Uh, first of all, I would like them to look at my website and give us comments and, and, and friend me. Uh, um, I'm at www. Dot Jimmy Moore, that's J I M M I E M O O R E dot com. All right, well, thank you very much okay. for sitting down with us today. Thank you.